So welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we've had some crazy upsets today, guys. Crazy upsets. So let's go ahead and start with this, man. So we got the first game we got here. It is Romania 3, Ukraine 0. Um, I want to apologize to all my Romanian fans watching this. Because in my predictions video, I predicted Romania to finish bottom. Romania to finish bottom. And and I was thinking to myself, oh, Romania, why are they? I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't think. They were one of the best 24 teams that deserve to qualify. And I was looking at the qualification record. I was saying, oh, no, they're just defensive merchants. Defensively, they're great, but they don't offer much in that attack. And part of that is probably still true to this day. But the fact remains is that they're not finishing bottom of this group. Well, now, technically, it is still a possibility, but it is very unlikely. And they showed up. They showed up big time. And this is a huge, huge win. And by the way, this is the second ever time Romania has ever won in the European Championship history. So I think that deserves a round of applause because that's a cool, that's an incredible achievement for them. And for Ukraine, as a said, man, for all the talent for this team has and for all the players they have, the big name players, they failed to deliver. They failed to deliver because you look at this Ukraine team, right? There are so many good players in this Ukraine team. You got Modric, you got Dobrik, you got Lunin, you got Shankovic, you got Zinchenko. For whereas for Romania, I think most people only know Dragosin. And that's it. No one else. And the fact that Romania did this is incredible. That first goal, man, I don't know what Lunin was doing. Lunin makes a terrible mistake, gives it to Man, and Man passes it to Stainchu, and their captain, and he scores a wonderful goal. The second goal, man, another worldy goal there uh, from Marin. Marin scores to make it 2 0. Very, very good, good goal there. Uh, great individual effort. Lunin should have done better, man. Lunin was close to saving that. He should have done better for that one because I think it bounces off Lunin and it goes into the net. So two errors for Lunin. Uh, then the third goal, man. Terrible, terrible, uh, terrible defending there. I don't know what Ukraine was doing there. Give man too much space. Man just passes it to Drag Dragus. And Ukraine thought it was initially offside, but. If you actually look at the replay, it's actually onside. Drago scores to make it 3-0. And you know it was over. Mikhail Modric had a chance to cut the deficit. He made it wide. And I'm sorry, guys. Mikhail Modric, he had it. Yeah, he was also terrible. He was terrible. And Ukraine just show, just looked awful. Because there's so much talent this Ukraine team. And they did the, and they're in a really bad position. Because now Ukraine's next game is against Belgium. And given how Belgium is, we're going to talk about Belgium in a bit. That's going to be a very interesting game. Uh, well, actually, no. Ukraine's next game, is it against Belgium? I think it's against... Let me check. Hold on. Ukraine's next game is Slovakia. My bad. <laughs> they played Belgium the final day. Romania played Ukraine. I mean, so Romania played Belgium. So, I mean, looking at this group right here, guys, Romania is in a good position because given what I saw with Belgium, if Romania can get a point against Belgium, I think they should be through to round of 16. And then their final game is against Slovakia. Whereas for Ukraine, they have to um they have to get something against Slovakia because the final game is against Belgium and it'll be too tough. It'll be too tough for them. And also keep in mind they're in minus three goal difference. So you know goal difference could come into key to determine the four best third place teams. But yeah for Romania man amazing win for them. Shout out to Romania. I, I I'm glad to be proven wrong. And this is what I love about football is it's it's a big upset. It's a big upset and I don't think any more many people didn't see this coming. So shout out to Romania. They defy the odds and everything. Moving to the next game we got here, it is Belgium nil Slovakia one. Another upset. I I thought you know maybe Romania winning. Okay, you know what? Maybe one upset's enough in Group E. Two upsets. I did not have that in the cards. And Slovakia, man, what they did defensively were fantastic. Chinese scoring a fantastic goal there. A great assist on Kucha. You can maybe say it's a bit of a goalkeeper task, to, uh, goalkeeper tax, because you know Castillo's did get the initial shot saved. But then the rebound falls through. And obviously, you can see the rebound goal was quite unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, that's just how football is. You know, it's, it's just how football is. And, yeah, so, and, yeah, that's just how it is. And the uh, Rome uh, Slova uh, Belgium, man, they were really disappointed today, man. And Lukaku, man, he had a he had a bad game. Let's keep it a stack. Let's keep it a stack. He Lukaku had a bad game. And the Belgian team just looked awful. They looked awful for this finishing the half. And let me just show you guys the stats here in particular. Belgium were really disappointed on the day. 16 shots, 5 on target. And I just think for Belgium in particular, man, I really expected more from them. Because Slovakia created a lot of good chances. They created a lot of good chances. They could have easily scored again. The 44th minute from the, the, from the corner. The 7th minute, the save. 40th minute, save. Good saves there. Bozenic, I remember this. This was a big save. This was a huge save Castiles did. 
Uh, then, yeah, it was very, very disappointing. Belgium looked really awful. Lukaku didn't really play well. KDB. Guys, we might have to have a KDB convo for Belgium. We might have to have that convo, guys. I don't want to have it, but we might have to have it because KDB was pretty disappointing today. Trossard. Out of the second half, man. Second half, man. Second half. Second half is where things got interesting, guys. Second half is where things got interesting because Slovakia, they defended like for their lives. And as the inferior team, you have to find ways to get results, especially in a tournament football. It doesn't matter how pretty it is or on it's terrible to watch everything. You're the inferior team. You have it is your obligation to get a result. So I understand what you uh, uh Slovakia did because defensively they were fantastic. Obviously, Lukaku uh then did equalize um in the second half, uh 56th minute. Now it was believed as offside. And and yeah, offside. You know, it was just unfortunate. It was just unfortunate it was offside because I think Lukaku was offside here. Let me see if we can get it right here. Yeah, 56 minute. It was offside. Um, Trossard's, yeah. Um, but he's offside by his shoulder and his goal is chalked off. Yeah, Lukaku was offside. And then uh, Lukaku created a lot of chances. Then the 63rd minute was a great, great chance there. And it was cleared off the line by Hanko. Hanko, an underrated Slovakian player. I remember I actually did a final save and he was actually one of my best players there. Fantastic. Then obviously, uh, Belgium then did equalize right at the end there. But then Obenda's, it was a handball. Obenda used his hand. The goal wasn't given. And yeah, Slovakia, they held on to the end and managed to get a crucial three points. And guys, the Slovakia team is, look. I mean, look at the Slovakia team, guys. They have some good players. Like Dubraka is a good goalkeeper, plays for Newcastle. Skriniar was fantastic. Hanko, I thought, was amazing. Hanko is really underrated, by the way, guys. Uh, Varvo is good. Kucha is good. Lobotka. And I believe I'm not mistaken, guys. Kucha and I think it's uh, Pakarik. They were there for the 2010 World Cup, guys. They played in the 2010 World Cup. And they managed to be, they're still playing, which is crazy. They're both 37 years old. is insane. And yeah, man. So for Slovakia, man, huge, huge win for them. Gives them a great chance to advance. And for Belgium, as I said, man, Lukaku, man. Is there like a curse on Lukaku? Because Lukaku, for me, was just terrible in this game. He just it didn't do well. And the, D Dominic Tedesco, man. The substitutions were way too late. Why are you making subs at the 74th to 84th minute when you know your team needs a goal? And why don't you make substitutions at halftime? Halftime subs should have been made, you know? It's just ridiculous to me. Why didn't why didn't Charles De Catalera not come on? Why is Vertaga not starting? You know, like it just doesn't make any sense. So you know, and yeah, for uh, Dominic Tedesco, man, is is he a bad manager? I think it's a bit too soon to say, but he's making a lot of weird decisions. And yeah, man, KDB, man, he was probably the best player for Belgium of the day, but it just didn't really work out, man. It just didn't really work out, and. Yeah, there's only so much. Um, and maybe, we, I don't know. What, let me know what you guys think about KDB. Should we have a convo about him on tomorrow's stream? Let me know what you guys think. Moving we'll to the final game we got here, guys. The final game we got here is Austria nil, um, France 1. So, for Austria, man, uh, it, it, they played well. I thought Austria played really well defensively. I thought their midfield was fantastic. Their midfield was really amazing. Like, I thought um, I thought Seewald was fantastic. Gregoritsk was great as well. Grilitsk. Um, Limer, but the issue for Austria is just their attack was so bad. Their attack was very limited. They don't have a lot of good goal scorers, and that's what worries me for this Austria team. Whereas France, on the other hand, they looked a bit kind of underwhelming, guys. And guys, do France need Giroud? Because say what you will about Giroud and criticize him all you will, Giroud really does show up for France. He is that guy that makes France the team that they are, right? And I think Giroud just adds more dynamism to that attack. He makes Mbappe and Griezmann more connected. Because I was looking at this France 11, I was like, it's a pretty good 11. But why on earth does Dembele start? Why on the earth does Rabiot start? The, both these guys shouldn't be in the starting 11. Both these guys are terrible, in my opinion. They shouldn't be starting. And and I just think for France in particular, man, they were good in the day. They were creating a lot of good counterattacks. But the issue for France is just they didn't have that guy the up front. They didn't have that striker. And I think that was a problem. Because a lot of the play, a lot of the plays they've had went out wide. They didn't have anyone in the middle, you know. And Mbappe in particular, man, he had a he had a he had an underwhelming game. He had an underwhelming game. Like let's let's be real, guys. Mbappe, with the amount of chances he had, he should have scored those goals. He should have scored, especially that one. I think he was one v one with the keeper. The fifty fifth minute. I don't know how he missed this one. He missed this one. And if he put it on target, it's a goal. It's a goal. Mbappe wasn't that great on the day. Mike McNaughton made a huge save. I believe is the first half. Big big save. And Angola Conte, man, defensively the guy was fantastic. He had a master class defensively. Conte was actually regarded as a man of the match, which I agree with. And for Austria, as I said, man, I mean, just looking at the stats right here, man. France got the goal there. It was a bit of a, a nasty cross there. Uh, Walbert puts it in own net inadvertently. 
And yeah, man, Francis just said, man, they were just good, man. Five shots, one target. Durham had that chance there. Mbappe, I think Mbappe had a chance that went wide to the eighth minute of the game. And obviously Mbappe again, 33rd minute. And yeah, Austria, just like I said, man, they had a great chance there. This was the save I was talking about, Bogmetzer. And the second half, man, Austria really did do everything they could to score. Bogmetzer, the 78th minute, had a chance there. Um, and then, uh, let me see if we can find the other chance. And then, plus, so yeah, th this was a big, big chance right there. As you can see, Bogmetzer, uh, right there, indeed. So, yeah, I just think for um, Austria in particular, man, if they could just improve their attack a bit better, they, ha they could go through this group because... I look at Poland and Netherlands, and I'm not really convinced with either team. So Austria have a great chance to finish second. As for France, they're coming into this one in good form. They're coming into this one good. You know, they can now get second place. They can now they should be able to top the group. Their next game is against Netherlands, I believe, and that's gonna be a big game. So if France could get the win against Netherlands and Austria, I believe they play against Poland. If Austria can beat Poland, hey, they're in a round. They're in a good position to make the round of 16. So it makes the group very interesting. Let's see what happens. Can Austria be the dark horse, guys? Because of all the teams I've seen so far. I think they have the best chance to be a dark horse. I think they have the best chance. Their midfield is great. Ralph Ragnick's a good coach. It's just they have to improve that attack. They have to improve that attack and hope that attack can get better because, my goodness me, that attack is very underwhelming. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know if there's any major talking points in the comments below. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.